Bread to Win, brought to you by Arrowfield, the home of four-time champion sire, Snitzel. I'm Caroline Searcy. Welcome to a new week of Bread to Win. Coming up, the latest thoroughbred news from Australia and overseas. Outstanding two-year-old sire, better than ready, at Queensland's Lindhurst Stud, along with Barbaric and Rothsay. Karingal Stud at Wagga Wagga welcomes Group 1 winner producing sire Merchant Navy to join finance tycoon, prized icon and more. And in Arrowfield Studs, horse who made you love racing, the Wizard of Words, Suzanne Philcox, who's named some of the greatest racehorses we've seen from the Woodlands Godolphin eras. First, though, the latest from the bloodstock world in our Oz Horse News. Queensland breeding industry lost one of its most popular and successful stallions through the week with Shoa Hart dying at the age of 25. Until Animo's run of recent success, he was the only horse in the 2000s to have won Group 1s at 2, 3 and 4 years of age. As a multiple Queensland champion stallion at Glen Logan Park, he sired the winners of over $100 million in prize money through his offspring and as a broodmare sire. Dual Group 1 winner Turak Toff continues his legacy at stud along with broodmare their daughters such as Mimi LeBrock, the dam of Barbaric, who will feature later in the show. Signore Fox running on and they beat off Coruscate. Outstanding looking son of Exceed and Excel, Signore Fox will stand the upcoming season at Almervale near Scone in the Hunter Valley. The Peter and Paul Snowden trained eight-year-old won four stakes races, including the Star Kingdom stakes, and was placed in two Group 1s, the Kingsford Smith and the Stradbroke. He's from a strong international family and will feature on Bread to Win in coming weeks. At the 150, General Bow chassis, and it's our time. The traditional spring lead up at Flemington, the Ori Star handicap was won confidently by It's Our Time by late son of Snitzel, Time for War. From a Zedative mare, the Danny O'Brien trained six year old is the fifth stakes winner for the former Kitchwin Hill stallion, whose silver slipper winning son, Time to Rain, will appear again soon on Bread to Win at Matthew Samblom's Kingstar Farm. It's Paddington who leads the way. The magnificently named Paddington added the Sussex Stakes to his Group 1 honour roll with the son of Siuni, the latest star from the Coolmore Valley Doyle operation in Ireland. He's from the Monsieur Mare Modern Eagle, bringing the Saddler's World's blood in on his damn side. The English early August online sale contains more great opportunities to pick up high quality breeding stock for the new season, including Anders' three quarter sister Satin Love by Snitzel in fall to Morris, who's fully booked out this year. Warm smile by new approach is from a Dabawi, half-sister to Animo from the Group 1 winning mare Animato and is another highlight lot with Animo standing his first season at Dali Stud. The sales final bidding countdown is on Wednesday, August 9 from 10am. I am me in front from Dragonstone. The Group 2 Missile Stakes features as our English Graduate of the Week with I Am Me outgunning a high-class field for the Dynamic Syndications team. The race was marred by the tragic loss of Big Parade, but the winner stayed out of trouble to record a second stake success. By two-time champion Australian sire I Am Invincible, I Am Me is from Medallia Doro Mare Mef Nuda, who was bred by John Camilleri and bought by Cambridge Stud in 2019. I Am Me was sold by Sedgwick and host starred two dynamic syndications and Dean Watt Bloodstock for $210,000 at the 2020 Inglis Premier Yearling Sale. The Kruger family have forged a hugely influential role in the thoroughbred breeding industry at their Lindhurst stud base in Queensland. Better Than Ready is now one of Queensland's greatest sires and a top two-year-old sire nationally. He's joined by Barbaric and Rothsay, all following in some famous hoof prints.
pleasure. It's great to be here at Lyndhurst Stud again in Queensland and it's a beautiful winter's day. It's a bit cold for us southerners but you've had a really beautiful winter and, and you've been able to keep the place irrigated and, and everything looks wonderful. Yeah, that's right Caroline, it uh, has been a bit of a dry winter. We've had about 40 frosts and another one this morning down to minus three um, but we generally get beautiful days like this. Of course, the property's been breeding thoroughbreds since 1857, so we know, you know, the first fillies, two-year-old stakes race of the year, the McDougall Stakes, now the Callaway Gal, is named after a former owner of the farm. So there really is a lot of history here. There is. The, the Kruger family are in their 70th year uh, breeding thoroughbreds here, and prior to that, there was only two families, the McDougall family, and back in the late 1800s, early 1900s, was the Gore family. And you can see the result of that. I mean, the beautiful barn and, and the, you know, you can see some of the, the old horses that have stood here over the years, you know, Grand Chaudier, the sire of the huge broodmare influence, Easy Date. We know she's a dam of snippets in the family of not a single doubt. So Eyeliner, she was a star filly, won the Champagne Stakes in Sydney in a faster time than Todman. And after winning eight in a row in Queensland, a horse of the year in 1967, these are horses we still hear about today. Yeah, they are, Caroline. The eyeliner was she was a, she was by the foundation side for the Kruger family, Smoky Eyes, a stallion that my my grandfather bought out of Victoria. He'd had he had a couple of crops on the ground, and the horse arrived here with four of his weanling colts, and one of those uh, one of those colts went on to win a Victorian Derby. So uh, yeah, it's, there's there's a lot of history. Jeff, this is a statue of the buzzard. Of course, he had a different name. His his registered name in in uh, the UK was was different to that. But he was the sire of Old Rowley, also of Rainbird, of course. So both won Melbourne Cups, and he had Caulfield Cup winners as well. You must be so proud of the history of the horses that have come from this property. Oh, we certainly are, Carolyn. Yes, the, um, the buzzard was imported in the early 30s by Mr Barnes and Mr McDougall, Mr Barnes from Canning Downs, and he sired the winners of many of Australia's greatest races. The uh, the original name in the UK? The Bastard. He, he raced as the Bastard in England, yeah. and when he arrived in Australia in the early 30s, he, the Australian stud book changed his name to The Buzzard. <laughs> I think a lot of the, the childhood memories are, are watching the, the progeny of, of the of the Lindhurst Stallions coming through, go, go, going back as far as Grand Shorty Air and Head Over Heels and, and uh, Celestial Dancer and Sequalo, forever watching their, the, their, their daily runners. Spirit of Boom's doing a wonderful job and Sequalo had a couple of Group 1 winners, which uh, Group 1 winners um, at the time by Queensland Stallions were a rarity and he did a wonderful job. Jolie Bay in front, better than ready, grabbed it and won it. Well, speaking of super sires, your own super sire in better than ready. It's been an absolute delight watching the success of this stallion by, of course, more than ready here in Queensland and, and obviously further on. Uh, Skirt the Law, we know, of course, is his Magic Millions two-year-old classic winner this year and then only just two lengths off Lazago in the Sweet Embrace. Um, you know, what a great season he's had, but, but the last few seasons have been just fabulous for him. They have, Caroline, right from the word go, he's been a great uh, juvenile winner-getter. In his first year alone, he had 23 individual two-year-old winners, which is second to uh, Without Fear in, in the all all-time records so and he backs that up each year with near 20 individual winners he features very highly in all the in all the size tables at the moment well of course he finished last season in the top 15 nationally and highest of any on that general size list for Australia given he had fewer numbers outside the likes of scissor kick with giga kick and street boss with animo so off less numbers he's done a great job on the national scale he, he has caroline as well as uh, skirt the law winning the two-year-old magic millions he, he also won the cutest open sprint with alpine edge and alpine edge also won the archer in rockhampton so he's He's, had, he's, he's knocked off some of Queensland's feature races, and uh, which has uh, helped him put him in that position. Uh, and as you said, with uh, lesser numbers. Apache Chase from September run, Power Whaley. Uh, last year, Apache Chase won the Group 1 Kingsford Smith, Tiger Legend, the Vaux Rogue. Better get set the just now. But, but, you know, again, getting back to what you said before, what I love is every week he seems to have those two-year-old winners. That's right. I've been going by the slogan: if you want, if you want an early runner, uh, look no further. Um, he's he's just doing a wonderful job with his two-year-olds. You know, they go on too. It's not as if it's only that early precocious speed he has. And a lot of the more than ready stock we've seen do that over the years. That's right. And as you just mentioned, the Vowles, he ran in the Derby this year. It's good to see that they're stretching them out over a bit of ground. When 
you see him now? I mean, I, all I can see is his power. You know, you see a lot of more than ready, obviously the darker colouring and he's, he's built, he's so powerful. Those wonderful, big, strong Gaskins and the great back end on him. How do you describe him to people? Well, I get asked all the time, what type of mare do you send to better than ready? But that's the beauty with this horse. They're, they're like peas in a pod. It doesn't matter if they're from a small mare, medium sized mare or a large mare, he generally throws a, a pea in a pod. Uh, uh, type progeny. In Queensland you can't I guess set the fee too high anyway but he's just such great value 27,500. I've said it a few times in recent weeks that uh, uh, Spirit of Boom and Better Than Ready are, are, are probably priced a lot of Queensland uh, breeders out of, out of the market but we're, we're certainly looking forward to a, a big season we've got mares coming from New Zealand and, and many of the leading farms in the Hunter Valley it's going to be great to see the progeny of these of these better mares that are going to better than ready and we've already seen that uh, with with skirt the law her two-year-old crop is from a year when we got a lot of support from from the Hunter Valley breeders and it'll be interesting to see um, when those those current batch of two-year-olds turn three and I'm looking forward to it Bartley's in front, 100 to go. Barbaric's out after it. I just love seeing Barbaric here. You're waiting on his first foals, but he covered 86 mares. That's a good number for a first season sire. It was. We're only weeks away now from his first foals, and many of his the breeders that supported Barbaric, Barbaric last year uh, will be lining up again this year to, to get the lifetime breeding rights. So that's important, and that'll give him numbers for the next few years. Well, he's just a beautiful stallion, a son of I Am Invincible. We know, of course, crowned as champion Australian sire too years running and he's out of that Magic Williams two-year-old winner Mimi LeBrock. He's, he's similar to her in his markings and uh, obviously she was a great race filly trained by Bart Cummings but tell us about him and what you see here. He's still a young stallion isn't he but he has so much presence and, and that fabulous back end on him. Yep he does have a lot of presence. Um, he was a $900,000 yearling. He won a black opal stakes after winning his, his maiden uh, as a two-year-old. Would have run in the golden slipper but there was a little a little issue going on so they put him aside. So he's, he's got a lot of similarities to Better Than Ready. He's, he's actually got uh, similar looks to Better Than Ready. We're really looking forward to the prospects of his progeny. But obviously having that, that ownership group supporting him is a big help too. It, it is Caroline and the Newgate China Horse Club, so and Glen, and you know, we look forward to their support again this coming season. Rounding out the the stallion roster here at Lindhurst Stud, Rothstay, the son of Fastnet Rock. We know, of course, that the real flag bearer is Rothfire. So tough. I mean, he won the JJ Atkins three years ago, and then he won the Group Two Victory Stakes this year. But uh, you know, great run in the Stradbroke as well, and and really good to see Rothstay here. That's right, Rothstay. He's, he's about 15 now, and. He's a Group 1 producing stallion. We've had him from Glen Logan Park Stud when they shut down their stallion operation about five years ago now. He's had great numbers and at his fee, he's he'll be very well supported this year. And Rothfire's his flag bearer. He was oh so close in the, in the Stradbroke from a wide barrier. He's a great uh, support role to to barbaric and better than ready. Oh, you had the barley boiler, which I know, you know people such as the great Bart Cummings and many others still swear by to this day. Yeah, that's right. You can you can smell the, the smoke in the air. But, uh, yes, so we certainly we grow uh, every day by Christmas Day. We boil the barley for the yearlings, and we are self-sufficient in in um, in certainly in, in lucerne growing. We've got 600 acres of irrigated lucerne, and it's very important during the summer to fill the shed for the winter. And so far, so good. How are you seeing the Queensland breeding industry right at the moment? It certainly has been tough in in years gone by, but the cuter scheme has really. Uh, lifted its game now in Queensland. Prize money levels in Brisbane alone in the metropolitan area are getting closer to 100,000 every Saturday for two and three year olds. Cutest pay 